Hey friends, Sonia here with Ellie and Mac today, and I want to take you through a number of different ways to hem knit garments. Now, knit garments are fantastic. It is what a majority of our patterns at Ellie and Mac are made for, is for knit fabric. And there is so many different ways that you can hem your garments when you are sewing with knits, and more so than just the traditional turn under and zigzag or cover stitch. So we're gonna be going through some different ways to hem your knits today, and I will go ahead and pop up a list really quickly of all of the different ways, uh, methods that we're going to be using. Now do keep in mind, I use a variety of machines. I do some on my sewing machine, some on my serger, and some on my cover stitch. So depending on what tools you have available for yourself, you can kind of mix and match. I do recommend though, a lot of the techniques that I'm using can be done on uh, different machines. Like you can do a traditional hem on a uh, cover stitch or a sewing machine. So just depending on the look that you're going for, there's a lot of different options. Go ahead and stick around and I will also include tags, uh, time tags down in the description. If you want to look for a specific method of hemming, uh, you can go down there and skip to that specific part in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have the twin needle installed in my machine already, and when you're using a twin needle, you actually have to run a second thread down. So my machine has, where you wind the bobbin, just a post where you add the extra thread. Now I folded my fabric under just like you would normally when you're doing a hem, and I went ahead and I got started, but what I noticed is I got a little bit of tunneling, and I've seen this happen with twin needles a lot. It's a common problem. So what you can do when you have that kind of bubbling up is you want to lower your thread tension. So on my machine, I just use the uh, screen to lower the tension, and that means that the bobbin thread is not pulled as tightly. So you don't get the raise between the two layers of stitching. It's much smoother and flatter and just a neater hem. So for this demonstration, I used a four millimeter needle that is four millimeters between the two needles. So you get a medium width stitch or double layer of stitching and it creates a zigzag on the back. So next we have a zigzag stitch and I am actually using double sided tape on this particular project because it is swimsuit fabric which tends to be quite slippery. So you put one side of the tape down, remove the backing, and then you tape your hem in place. And it's just washable, so once you wash this, it uh, dissolves in the water, which is really, really nice. It's a great tool to use for slippery fabrics like this. I usually decrease the uh, width of my zigzag stitch a little bit and go down to four millimeters, and it makes it a lot easier as you can tell that I have that double-sided tape under there so my hem is just not moving it around at all. Even with the swim fabric, it makes this whole process uh, quite a bit faster. So of course we go ahead and backstitch and then that leaves us with a nice even zigzag. It is just a classic way to hem your garments. Our next technique is faux flat locking and this is something that we received a lot of questions about in our group. Now I'm going to pop up on the screen really quickly the settings that I used for my brother because I know that this is a very common machine. But also keep in mind that you will definitely want to practice with some scrap fabric to make sure that you get those settings dialed in. Now you're going to fold your hem over and then flip it back again and you want all of your edges to be perfectly even. Now I disengage my knife, that is personal preference, but uh, you can have it engaged if you want to. Now I ran it through with those settings that I listed above and then you're going to want to pull the fabric apart and that's what flips the hem on the underside and creates those vertical lines. I think this technique works a lot better when using a stable fabric, especially because you're pulling it, whereas a jersey you can distort it if you're not careful. Uh, so I like using a cotton lycra, for example, where you can pull on it and the recovery's there. It's going to go back to its right shape. Now it's easier to see when you do it yourself, but there's a little bit of a bulkier hem on the inside of a flat lock, so I definitely like to go through and do a thorough pressing both on the outside and on the inside to just kind of flatten everything out and make it as least bulky as possible. 
I am totally obsessing over this technique and I really hope that you give it a try. It's so fun and so simple. Next, I just want to show what it looks like if you just serge the edge of your garment. Uh, I don't typically leave my garment serged. I know some people like to do this. It depends on the garment that you're sewing. But where I have a dress right here, I don't think that it looks quite finished enough for me to just leave it serged. You can get away with this maybe if you're using a bulkier thread and obviously matching threads so it actually looks like your hem is wrapped in thread but I typically again don't just leave them serged. This is such a fun way to hem your garments and just add a little bit extra pizzazz. I am using Pico Elastic along the bottom hem of this dress and it provides such a fun little peekaboo of interest and just makes it look delicate. So what I'm going to do here is use my serger and I'm going to line the edge of that Pico Elastic up with the raw edge of the hem of my skirt. And then I'm just going to sew, and I'm using a serger, but of course you can definitely use a sewing machine for this as well. Uh, serge that all the way around the bottom and overlap those ends just a tiny bit. So I took this to my sewing machine, and you want to fold the elastic under and make sure that the edge of the fabric is lined up perfectly so you're not seeing too much elastic. Now what I do is I scoop my needle over to the left so that I can actually get the bulk of the elastic under the foot. It just helps with uh, making sure it doesn't get distorted. And then I'm doing a long straight stitch to attach this around the bottom. Because the sunny day dress has a gathered skirt, I've got a lot wider hemline um, than a fitted garment, for example, so I can use a straight stitch rather than, say, a zigzag, and I don't have to worry about popping that stitch. So here's a close-up of that finished hem, and then when it's warm, you can see just a tiny peekaboo of the Pico elastic. first thing you're going to want to do is adjust your machine. You're going to remove your left needle and you are going to thread your machine for three thread sewing. You also will need to adjust your tensions. I am just using a regular serger thread. The tensions will differ if you're using a woolly nylon or different thicker or thinner thread. Um, you also want to sh shorten your stitch length between 1 and 1.5. I lower mine all the way to 1 because I like the stitches to be really tight and I don't like a lot of the fabric to show through at the hem. Um, make sure also that you ad adjust your differential um, according to the weight of your fabric so that it feeds through evenly. And then you just want to go really slow and make sure for just a regular rolled hem that you aren't pulling on your fabric but you're letting it feed through really, really cleanly. And so you can see there, we have a nice, ooh, there we go, a nice clean rolled hem. It doesn't have any wave to it. It's very straight, if you can see that. There's no puckering in the fabric. And there is your rolled hem. The lettuce edge hem is a variation of a rolled hem. So your settings are going to remain the same as they are for a rolled hem. The main difference is you're going to be pulling and putting reverse tension um, on the fabric as you're sewing. And the harder you pull, the more of a wave or lettuce effect you'll get. So I'm going to kind of show you a couple of different variations depending on how much I pull on my fabric. This is its max stretch, so I'm going to do like eh, 25%. So if you take a look, it's got a little bit of a wave, it's very relaxed, and when you take this off, it's going to have just a teeny bit of curl. Now if I pull a little bit tighter, you're going to get that really, really extreme lettuce edge um, that has a really fun effect um, at the end of sleeves and skirts and all different items. Okay, so the beginning over here where I started. As you can see, the hem is a little bit wavy, but it's not super tight. Um, it has like a relaxed edge to it, lettuce edge. Then as the tighter you pull, the more that it gets this really fun edge that adds a little bit of pizzazz to the bottom of your garment. And it will vary depending on the thickness and the recovery of your fabric. You will have more or less stretch. This is a bit of a thicker um, cotton lycra 
so my, my lettuce edge isn't quite as tight as it would be if I did a thinner, like a DVP. So next we just have a traditional hem. I'm using a cover stitch machine. So when hemming a curve, I like to use a sewing gauge just because it's a little bit harder to eyeball and make sure that it's consistent across that whole curve. So you adjust the uh, blue marker to the depth of the hem allowed in your pattern. And I find it's quite a bit easier to ease in the extra fabric in the curve by ironing it in first. And then I just use my metal pattern weights to help cool that fabric so it really stays put with that memory crease before I go and hem it. Another tip that I really love for hemming curves is to make sure that you do this whole process before you sew the side seams. You'll notice when we get to the side seam, there is a bit of a dovetail where the uh, fabric does not reach all the way to the side seam, and that is very hard to stretch out when you are sewing a side seam. So it's much easier to do this process, sew your hem, and then your side seam, you're gonna get a lot better results. Now when you move over to your machine that you're going to hem with, whether that's a cover stitch or a sewing machine, I will always use a scrap piece of fabric as a leader and that will help get those initial uh, stitches pulled through the machine without the machine eating it. And that uh, happens a lot when you're working with thinner fabrics like this and so having a leader makes a huge difference in helping kind of pull those initial stitches through. Now as we go along our curve, it is super important to, with your needles down, lift your presser foot anytime you start to get any of that twisting. Now one of the most common problems I see with a curved hem is you get that twisted look of your fabric and it's really hard to iron it out. So as you go, the second you start to see any of that fabric twisting, make sure you lift up your presser foot, release that tension, and straighten that fabric back out so that it doesn't continue to push and give you that warped hem. So if you continue to release that tension, you can get a nice even flat hem. The next technique we're looking at is using a serger to actually gather in the edges of a circle to ease in that extra fabric that you have when you are going in the round like this. Now what we're gonna do is take this over to the serger and we're gonna increase the di differential feed so it gathers just ever so slightly. So we increase the differential feed, which is just making the machine move the fabric through or pull it through faster than it would otherwise. And I realized that mine was gathering just a little bit too much, so I adjusted it there. But you can see that it is gathering the edges just a tiny bit. And just make sure you don't overlap your serger stitches because then it allows you to adjust. So I'm going to go ahead and iron my uh, hem down. I'm just eyeballing the amount. Uh, you can, of course, measure this if that's uh, better for you. Now you'll see as I go that I am adjusting those serger stitches a bit as we move around the circle. So that's why it's important to make sure that you leave a small space between those serger tails so that you do have the ability to adjust this as you go. Now you can take this over to your sewing machine or your cover stitch machine to hem it. And we're gonna do the same as we have done on the past curves that we've sewn. And that is just making sure that you're lifting that presser foot to adjust for any pushing of the fabric and just making sure that that gets realigned so you don't get those bubbles and those warps in your hem. And of course, because it's a circle, we're gonna go ahead and take this over and give it one more good press before it's all done. So that's a great technique to help ease in all that extra fabric when you're hemming a circle. Next, we're going to serge the edge just like we did before, but we aren't gathering this time. I'm using the serger to actually stabilize the edge of this piece of fabric so that I can create a very narrow hem. Now, you'll find that serging and then stitching over it creates stability. So this is a great technique when you're working with either a difficult fabric, a slippery fabric, or maybe thin fabrics like double brushed poly. We get a lot of questions about because your machine likes to eat it. So by stitching over fabric that has been reinforced by serger stitches, your machine is going to feed it a lot better. So by having the added structure, I was able to stitch close to the edge of this for this arm side of the tulip dress. The next time we're looking at is the same dress in faux leather. Now I'm hemming the bottom of this dress and I want to point out a few things when you're working with slipperier fabrics like this. I like to release the tension of the presser foot so it's not pushing down on my fabrics which can create drag. 
Next, I'm tucking my project underneath the presser foot so that the needles are right on the edge of the fabric. I do that so that I can get my fingers close and help work through those first initial stitches. You can, if you would like, use a leader like we did in earlier hemming techniques. And you want to start slow and continue to go slow. I know I have a problem with this because I have no patience, but it's so important when you're working with slippery fabrics like this because your machine will actually push the two layers of fabric apart and you'll get that twisted, distorted look that we do not want in our hems. My last tip for specialty fabrics like this is to make sure that you have a little bit longer stitch length so that you don't damage the fabric. They can be a bit more delicate, so having your stitches spaced out a little bit can help maintain that structure. Next, we're looking at using three needles in your cover stitch machine. This gives you a bit more of a decorative finish, especially if you do a contrasting thread like I did. And then I am using a clover hot hemmer for this technique. It's a great tool that you can actually iron on top of, and so you put it down across a straight hem, and then it helps you maintain that very even hem depth all the way across. Next we take it over to our cover stitch and I am definitely going to use a leader with this fabric because it is a thin bamboo. I love wearing this fabric but it is a little bit uh, lighter of a fabric, lighter weight, so you do have to be careful when you are starting so that your machine doesn't accidentally eat your fabric. Next, you just hem as normal. Really, the only difference with this technique is that you are using three needles instead of two, which gives you a really beautiful decorative finish. So if we flip this over, you can see the wide braid on the opposite side. Now, a very popular trend right now in home sewing especially is actually sewing upside down so that you get that wide braid on the top, and that is called a reverse cover stitch. It gives you that beautiful kind of athletic ready to wear look. So all you have to do is fold your fabric under like you normally would, but then you're gonna sew with the wrong side of the fabric up. Now I like to align my needles so they're basically in line with the edge of that fabric there. And then you are just gonna sew upside down. So I used a scrap piece just to demonstrate, but you can see that I used a neon thread in my looper, which is going to show up on the top of your fabric, and that is what creates this really beautiful contrasting look, and it's so popular in athletic wear right now. But you can also use this technique to go over your seams and just create a nice, fun pop of color. Thanks so much for joining us today, friends. I know that was a lot of fun techniques, so hopefully some of these gave you some inspiration for some new things to try, and we will see you in the next video.